So Sa'id ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl was from the people of Mecca. He lived in Mecca. And in fact, he was from the respected uh, tribes of, of the Quraysh. His father was Zayd ibn Amr. And Zayd ibn Amr was someone who lived before the prophethood of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He meets the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wasallam before prophethood takes place. And what's interesting about this meeting is that Zayd ibn Amr was one of those individuals who used to worship Allah. But his father did not meet the time when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given prophethood. As he grew up, he got married, he had children, he always questioned what Quraysh was doing. Before Islam, he used to go to those who used to bury their daughters alive and he used to say, don't bury her alive, give her to me, I'll look after her. And he was the one who used to believe that whatever Quraysh was doing was totally wrong. So one day he sat on the Kaaba or he sat with his back facing the Kaaba. He stood up in fact, and he was facing the rest of Quraysh in one of their great days of enjoyment. And he told him, oh Quraysh, look at the sheep that you are slaughtering here in the name of these idols yet Allah gave the sheep life, Allah caused the rain to fall, Allah caused the plants to grow and the sheep was eating from it and grew and now you are sacrificing the sheep in the name of the idols, don't you have any shame? So they beat him up. It said that when his father passed away, because if he passed away before prophethood, he went to the messenger of Allah and he said to him, he said, you know about my father, you knew that he was someone who used to worship Allah. And if he were alive today, he would have believed in you as well. So make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. And so the messenger of Allah sallam, he made dua for him. And he said that on the day of judgment, he's going to be an ummah in and of himself. Sa'id ibn Zayd, he accepted Islam in the early stages of prophethood. So he was in fact one of the first people to accept Islam. He accepted Islam before Umar ibn al-Khattab. Not only him, but his wife, Fatima bint al-Khattab, the, the sister of Umar ibn al-Khattab, they accepted Islam together. So much so that I'm sure we know of the story where Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu a few days later came out to murder Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he met Nu'aym ibn Abdullah on the path, Nu'aym ibn Abdullah told him, why don't you start with your own family? Look, your nephew and your own sister, they have accepted Muhammad. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu rushed. He went to meet this man, Sa'id ibn Zayd, one of the ten. How Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu beat up his sister and brother-in-law. And then when he saw the blood, he asked for the little parchments where the Quran was written on. And he read Surah Taha and he accepted the faith. And he declared his shahada with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the house. This was the man, Sa'id ibn Zayd. He also made the hijrah from Mecca to Medina. When he went to Medina, he was made a brother with Ubay ibn Ka'ab in Medina. He witnessed all of the battles which took place except the Battle of Badr. In a way, he did participate in the battle itself. But he never actually fought in the Battle of Badr. Because when he participated, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, gave him specific instructions. He sent out Sa'id ibn Zayd and also Talha ibn Ubaidillah. He sent them to scout and to spy on the caravan of Abu Sufyan. In the meantime, Abu Sufyan had already diverted his caravan and he had called for help. And so the situation had become worse than what was initially expected. And so they had no idea. So they were looking for the caravan. They never found the caravan. And by the time they returned, they found out that the battle had taken place and the Muslims were victorious. And even though they never participated in the battle itself, both of these companions, Sa'id and Talha radiallahu anhuma, they both received the booty. He also performed Umrah and Hajj with the Messenger of Allah alayhi and he also narrated about 48 hadith of the Messenger of Allah He used to prefer seclusion. So he was someone who abstained and he stayed away from all the fitan which took place. 
to worship Allah. Also, he was a scholar from the scholars of the companions, and he was someone who was in fact one of the most knowledgeable from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Alaihi He married uh, a number of times. He had over 30 children in total. When the Messenger of Allah passed away, he gave the Pledge of Allegiance, the Bay'ah to Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And throughout his life, especially after the death of the Messenger of Allah sallam, he lived a very quiet life. If you look through history, for example, you study and you read about his life, nothing is mentioned about his involvement, for example, of taking any positions. As we mentioned before, he had humility with regards to leadership, but also he was someone who would abstain from taking any type of leadership. And he was someone who was a soldier. So even after the death of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he still participated in the battles and the conquests of Islam. And he witnessed the conquest of Damascus. And also the battle of Yarmouk, the famous battle of Yarmouk which took place where the Muslims fought the Romans. And the numbers were huge, there were like 20-30,000 Muslims and there was about 120,000 Romans who were fighting. So it was a huge battle. And Khalid ibn Walid, he came up with a strategy to try to make the Muslim army look like as if it's more than it actually is. And he appointed some people who were overlooking their flanks to basically be part of this deception, this trick to trick the, uh, the opposing army into thinking there's actually more people. And from those people he appointed was Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. And he in turn appointed Sa'id ibn Zayd to take over his flank and to take over that responsibility while he was away. So it was a temporary responsibility. So again, it shows that he was someone who was competent, but he would stay away from it. And he says, I heard Abu Ubaidah. One of the men said, I think I'm going to die here. So if I meet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you have a message for him? So Abu Ubaidah said, yes, I have a message for him. Tell him that the Muslims are greeting you and tell him, we have found what you promised us to be the truth. So Saeed ibn Zayd says, when I heard Abu Ubaidah say this, radiallahu anhum jami'an, immediately it made us all very strong and we overcame the Romans. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and grant us ease and goodness. Throughout the life of Abu Bakr and the four Khulafa Rashidun, he never was involved or participated in, in any of the the battles which took place or the fitan or the trials which took place between the Muslims, especially later on during the lifetime of Ali radiallahu an. But he still gave bay'ah and the pledge of allegiance to the Khulafa al-Rashidun. So he gave the pledge of allegiance to Abu Bakr radiallahu an. He gave the pledge of allegiance to Umar radiallahu an and to Uthman. And when Uthman was killed, he gave the pledge of allegiance to Ali radiallahu an. And when Ali radiallahu an was killed, he gave the Pledge of Allegiance to Muawiyah after Hassan radiallahu an abdicated. And he gave the responsibility and he gave the leadership to Muawiyah. So then he gave the bay'ah to Muawiyah radiallahu an as well. One day, Sa'id ibn Zayd radiallahu an, he went to visit Al-Mughirat ibn Shu'ba who was in Kufa. And this was many years after the death of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also it was during the time of the fitna between Ali and Muawiyah radiallahu anhuma. And so he went to visit his friend Al-Mughirat ibn Shu'ba, another great companion of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While they were sitting there, somebody started to shout out from a distance. And Sa'id radiallahu an, he couldn't hear what was taking place. And so he asked Mughir radiallahu an, he said, what is this person saying? And so Mughir radiallahu an, he said, this person is cursing Ali radiallahu an. And he said, you hear people cursing the companions in your presence and you don't say anything, you don't respond to them. And so he stood up himself and he said, by Allah, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam with my own two ears and it connected with my heart. And I would never lie about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Verily Abu Bakr is in Jannah, and Umar is in Jannah, and Ali is in Jannah, and Uthman is in Jannah, and Talha is in Jannah, and Zubair is in Jannah, and Abdurrahman is in Jannah, and Sa'ad is in Jannah, and the ninth from the believers is also in Jannah. 
And so the people who were around, they asked, they said, who is the ninth person? And so he said, if you wish, you can make me the ninth person. So he didn't want to tell everybody else that he was actually the ninth person. And in another narration, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah is mentioned as the tenth. And once he mentioned these people, he said, if one was a witness to just one moment with the Messenger of Allah while his face was covered in dust, this individual would be better than any one of you, even if you lived the life of Nuh alayhi salam, meaning if you, even if you lived a long life. 